President Trump has repeatedly called for a crackdown on gang members crossing into the country illegally. His administration has frequently targeted one gang, MS-13. Hannah Dreyer, in collaboration with ProPublica and The New York Times Magazine, wrote an in-depth article on how some high schools have embraced the administration's crackdown on alleged gang members. She followed the story of one high school student on Long Island who was suspended, reported, and detained. Hannah joins me now on set. Uh, Hannah, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Your article is exceptionally detailed, and I wonder if you can sort of briefly take us through who this young man is and how he got to where he is. So the story followed Alex, who is a teenager. He was living on Long Island. He had come up from Honduras and was pleading for asylum. He was doing well in school. He had never gotten in trouble. And then one day he was doodling in class. He drew devil horns, the devil is his school mascot, and he drew 504, which is the country calling code for Honduras. Mm -hmm. um, but those are also gang signs. And so he was suspended just for three days. He thought everything was gonna be okay after that. But instead, a month later, ICE came to his door and he was detained. He was detained for a year and a half and then de deported. And two months before Alex was apprehended, then Attorney General Jeff Sessions went to that county where Alex lived and announced the Trump administration's strategy of ridding MS-13 from schools. I wonder, over the course of your reporting here, what did you discover about Alex's detainment? So Alex was one of a dozen or so kids in his high school and hundreds of kids across the country who have been swept up in this crackdown. And it was part of a new initiative that was trying to go after people who don't have criminal records, mm -hmm. but who police thought might be MS-13 affiliated. And they use things like suspensions, other non-criminal things to label people and detain them. So to be clear, again, Alex was here seeking asylum, which is a legal right. And up until that point had had no prior um, brushes with the law. There was nothing at all in his background to suggest any kind of criminal history. That's right. A lot of these kids were not here illegally. They were mm -hmm. here seeking asylum. Mm -hmm. Which we and... want to underscore is something different. When we talk about illegal immigration, I think sometimes there's a tendency to conflate the two. Um, but what we're discussing here is someone that actually went through that process, the legal process of trying to seek asylum and then was attending school when all of this happened. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, and so so that was not an uncommon thing, though, from your reporting. Right. So that used to be very uncommon. Mm -hmm. Gang membership is not illegal. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no way to detain somebody or arrest somebody just because you thought they might be flirting with the gang lifestyle. Like if you see somebody with baggy pants and a bandana, that's not illegal. You can't arrest them. Mm -hmm. But this new initiative allowed ICE to detain those people anyway, even though they hadn't committed crimes, even though they weren't here illegally. Um, because ICE can classify an immigrant as a danger to the community, as a gang member, and using that, they were able to detain all of these kids who otherwise would be leading their normal lives. So tell us about Alex's current status. Where is he now? So Alex was never able to challenge the evidence against him. He tried to get a court hearing where he could try to prove that he wasn't in the gang, but Months and months passed, a year and a half passed, and eventually he was so discouraged um, that he decided to stop fighting his immigration case and he accepted deportation. So now he's back in Honduras. All of his family, his mother, his father, his little brother are on Long Island. Their asylum cases are going fine. Um, so he's living in a room. Um, he's not able to find a job. He's not able to enroll in school. And he's just sort of waiting alone in this little town. Well, it's such an important uh, piece and really can speak to the consequences of these kinds of crackdowns. Hannah Dreyer, thank you so much, Hannah, for joining us. Thanks for having me.